Hey folks, Phil B9 here. We're gonna try using a new product today for formic acid treatments. I've always used the Mike Gone sponges and every year I haven't used them as a June kind of cleanup treatment for mites. I've always regretted it late year, uh, later. Uh, I skipped it last year because it was so hot and the bees were already so well advanced that uh, we were already putting supers on by this time and I'm paying for it now. So we're not making that mistake again, but Mike Gone has, uh, is not available anymore because old Bill died. So rest in peace and we need a new treatment method. So these are um, the, uh, actually uh, the little pads that go under meat packets in, uh, they're called dry lock pads and they go under your meat so that they can soak up a little bit extra water and make you pay a little bit extra for your steak. And they come kind of, we've just finished tearing them all apart, but uh, my plan is to put them in this bucket, which I have put a bunch of holes in the bottom. We're gonna stash a bunch in there. Then I'm going to put that in another bucket and then I'm going to fill it with the formic acid. And then once they've soaked up the acid, I'm going to let them drain a little bit so there isn't uh, dangerous acid kicking around. And then we're going to put that in, I guess we're going to need this bucket here. We're going to put that in that so that everything is kind of contained. And then we're gonna put these on the bottom boards after. So that's the plan. Uh, and this is the first time we're doing this this way, so bear with us. Watch the vent. Thank you, Timmy. And we've already had a little safety talk with the crew here about keeping up wind. This formic acid is it's not the nastiest thing in the world, but it's not good either. So you'll notice that I'm standing behind a barrier so it doesn't splash on me. We got a pretty good breeze here, so I'm not too worried about it splashing onto or the fumes being a problem. So once we get ready, we're going to take with the tongs that pad and put it on the bottom board. That's the plan. We're taking the opportunity to, while we have these boards up to clean off the bottom boards, we're using an old ice scraper for that. You don't want it too sharp or you'll break the wood. to do two pads per hive and these things are only perforated on one side fortunately the manufacturer only printed on one side so it's pretty easy to tell it's printing up to have the perforated side up Check my chef tip. 
Okay, two each. Now the hives go back down. And some of them are looking pretty good. We were here taking splits. Oh. Maybe even a month ago, not quite three weeks ago. We're also pulling out the eighth of our strips while we're at it. Some of these were still just in the denny line flow here. And for the time of year, we should already be in the dearth, but uh, it's been such a cold spring that um, the denny lines are just nicely coming on. So some of these stronger ones, they could get swarmy on us if we didn't get on top of things. So we're gonna have to come back with a plan to, I think we're gonna split, we're gonna put seconds on and split them later. huge rain here yesterday so we're can't get the truck into the field we're using our gator our supplies are limited so I thought under the circumstances this is a job we can do these three are strong that one not so much all right okay we've done one row putting them on the bottom we're gonna try on this row putting them on the top bars so in this case, I think I want to put the perforated side down so that it's not pressed, uh, sealed up against my blanket and putting them at the back so that those fumes have to go the furthest to get out. And the bees do move away from these pretty quickly and they don't necessarily love it. I feel like I'm barbecuing. These pads were a nickel a piece when you buy a thousand so not a huge investment here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for this row. And we'll uh, maybe alternate again and we'll compare results in a couple days.